In today's session of Divorce Court, Ty and Louise Cochran felt an instant attraction the day they met, and they looked forward to sharing their lives together. But after two and a half years, the marriage is over. You want to bring in your sister, your mother, his mother, his sister? I can't divorce you from the whole family. You do that. Ty says Louise became too controlling of everything in the marriage. You're the only one who's done anything in this marriage. Yes, ma'am. Somehow you have it in your head that it's all yours. And Louise wants more than just a divorce. You want me to give you your husband's clothes off his back? Yes, ma'am. So what am I supposed to do, have him strip and walk out of here naked? Yeah, basically. Today, Louise and Ty Cochran face off to end their marriage in divorce court. All rise, court is now in session. Mabley and Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Louise Crockran and Ty Crockran. I'm advised that after two short years of marriage, you're ready to end it already, Miss Crockran. What's the problem? Well, the first problem is adultery. There's little problems you can work through, but adultery you cannot work through. What is the problem with it? He, he slept with somebody else that wasn't his wife. I am, she was not his wife. I'm his wife. He should have slept with me if he was in the mood. But no, he went and slept with a little white girl, so that's on him. Mr. I'm not going to be married with him. <laughs> You've committed adultery according to your wife, and she's not too happy about that. We were separated at a time, so I wouldn't feel that that's separated. You were separated? We were separated. But not at divorced, the time. Ty? We were separated, though. I mean, no, I was we not living with you. Did you go get the a job, Ty? You if you sit there and do me right, if you do right, me out then the we house, was going to be together. Are Ty, you all suggesting that separation right. justifies adultery? Or no, having a relationship with someone else? No, not necessarily. If you was who you could have came to me. Your Honor. I just. I guess I got it ended just up happened, lonely huh? at the time. It so. just happened, huh? I was going down <laughs> there to see you saying, Ty, how you feeling? You ain't putting up with nothing, Ty. All I said, I came down there, I said, Ty, if, you know, how you feeling? You know, you're doing good. You know, you ready to come home. You ready to do right. But no, you don't want to do right. You want to go sleep though, with somebody else? Of course, though, but I'm else? tired of being in and out the house with you. That's well, keep That's a job. We want to keep you out. You're tired of being in and out of the house. Explain yeah. that. Explain that. Well, for the whole time we before we even got married, I mean... We couldn't live together. And why couldn't you live together? Uh, oh, it wasn't just I mean, me. Just it wasn't just me. It was all you. I mean, you, could, you, I you. When we first together, you the one kept breaking up with me, and then you're going to keep coming back to me talking about, okay, um, you know, you I want to be with you. You me out of your house. Most of the and house we're in Exactly. Under we, your name we should tell you something. You it was my house, Ty. You she wasn't doing that. nothing. Hold on. You kicked him out of your house? Exactly. Why do you call it your house? Because I was the one paying all the bills That's because he said. didn't want to keep a job. So I had to sit there and take care of the bills. I'm the one that had to pay the rent. What are, you, sure you, the job. What are you talking Boo. about? Boo, when I did you keep a job? job? When, Ty, when? You, kept, you didn't want to go in. You went in late when you did go in. And then you want to quit or what? Was if, you fired? I don't know. No. Now, you I said I that never, you quit. I, you ain't even no, in. you cannot say anything. You ain't even in. You ain't even in. Did I tell you to stand up? I've always kept a job, Your Honor. No, I, I you haven't. I take good care of my kids. Oh, do you? I've cleaned the do house. Do you? She's Your kids not... come first, huh? I mean, she what? works. Stop. What kids? Keep some order in here. I don't know. You guys are squabbling among each other. You're trying to tell me a story yes, of what's going on in your marriage. I'm the one making the decisions. This is not a squabble. This is a court of law. We have three kids. One biologically, two are mine. So the two of you have one child together. Yes, ma'am. You kicked him out of the house often, he says. I told him, I was like, I'll leave. But he don't want to do it because he don't want to take care of the kids. He don't want to take care of responsibilities, the bills, everything else You've like that. So you never offered to leave. So what you kick you him out because... Stop. You've never... Come to order. You kick him out because he won't take care of the bills and he won't take care of his children. And he won't keep a job. And he won't keep a job. He will not keep a job. So he when that happens, you it. say, get out of so here. So why do you bring me no, back? No, I don't. Why do you I don't take say. me back, then? Why do you call Mr. me Crocker, back? Mr. Crockford, why does she kick you out of the house all the time, from your perspective? From my perspective is that she's not... She doesn't... I mean, she doesn't understand my side as well, far as being a man. Well, help me understand your side. Why does she kick you out? <laughs> I guess she feels not. I'm not doing my job. I'm not. I'm not working up to her standards. I guess. And what are I'm you working up, up to? Your to, standards? To my standards, yes. I'm and doing what, fine. what are your standards? I take care of my kids. I try to keep a job. I mean, it's hard to keep a job when you're in and out of a house. I mean, she's she's not. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in a stable. I don't consider myself in a stable environment to where 
I would be able to just keep a job in one certain area. Was he working when you met him? No, ma'am, actually he wasn't. Was he working when you married him? Um, nope. How he long did you know him before days. you married him? A year. And was he working during that year? Um, yes, he was, temporary services. So he kept a job for an entire year? No, he's never kept a job since I met him for an entire year. So why did you marry that? him knowing that he didn't keep a job for an entire year? Because I did love him. I really did. I really cared for him. The only reason why we're here is because he committed adultery and I cannot deal with that. So you're not here because he wasn't work working? With. No, the, that, that's the little problem. Well, that's you can work problem. through that. That's why, that's, I keep that's why he was in Springfield, and that's why he committed adultery, because of the fact that he couldn't keep a job and stuff like that. Because it's of like, the fact that you keep you me Because you couldn't out. keep a job. He, you're being inconsistent, Ms. Crock, when you're saying that he's here because he committed adultery, but you put yes, him out the house because, because he didn't he have a job. Keep, because he couldn't keep a job. He sat there and was he's going to He's never kept a job, according to you. Huh? He's never kept a job, I according know. to you. I know. So what's See, different now that you married him? I was trying to work with him on that. Baloney. But once you married him, it said for better or for worse, and so he didn't keep a job. Exactly. Why kick him out? Exactly. I still took care I of my did. kids. Before we even got married, I took care of her kids. We didn't even have a kid. I took care of her kids and her sister's kids. And I was you were living darn, with her and her sister. When you say take sister. care of the kids, you, you mean you man. cooked I, I, and cleaned? I cooked, I cleaned the whole, no the whole yard. Shut up over there. I cooked, cleaned. You ain't got no kids. You I mean, keep I didn't have a job. Mrs. Crocker, who are you talking to? Yeah. Miss Mouth over there. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Excuse Who's Miss Mouth? Do you um, hear me that would be Kathy Kay, his Ooh, cousin. The reason why I moved to Zen and out of yeah, Springfield. you got a phone with me anyway. Excuse me, Miss Kay, is that your name? Yes, ma'am. I did hear you talking. And I saw your lips moving out of the side of my eyes. Are you a witness in this case? Yes, ma'am. I'm witness going to give you what? an opportunity to speak, witness but until I do so, and Miss Crockren, See? you don't talk when I'm much. talking. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You bullheaded. I'm not playing with you. Your case will be decided without you putting forth all of your evidence because you'll be out of this courtroom if you can't follow the rules of the court. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am, I agree. And you'll never get to be a witness, Ms. K, if you keep talking when you're not supposed to be talking. Yes, Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So I understand you've had a problem in this marriage from the beginning with family members. Yes, ma'am. Like Miss yep. K over here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma she doesn't like Miss Crockett. I can tell real easily. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that part of the problem? She don't know how to keep a job That's either. That's a big part of the problem, Your Honor. Miss K, come up. You like to kick it? Thank you. <laughs> so well. don't Please state your name. You, I didn't ask you to come up here to argue with Miss Crockett. What can you tell what, me about what, the marriage she's relationship? She's controlling. She's controlling. That's she's controlling very, her for what? Ever since I came home, she's been having a problem. This is my cousin. He's like my brother. If she got a problem with us hanging together, that's on her. He so he hangs out with you? Her. Not all the time. <laughs> yep. I'm sure we can hang out. We're, we're family. She has a problem with my whole family. And what's the, the problem family. with no, your family and Miss Crawford? Well, okay, no, uh, let's, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Why do you invite your whole family over there and then invite us? To Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, that's right. Because we had Thanksgiving at uh, Trina's house, so why? we already had it there. Second Thanksgiving Regardless I had, what? you don't, you it doesn't don't matter. The us, second none of our family we had, we had in my house because my sister nothing. got out of the hospital yeah. from having so a baby. So we have so a we family have history yeah. of problems. Yes, ma'am. You disrespect no. each other. No, I don't disrespect they her. Do. She I doesn't invite you to family. family. I really don't care about her. She disrespects my family. She disrespects my mother. And why is that? for my sister. How are you going to say this? Stop. You are a little disrespectful because you're disrespecting this court. Oh, okay. That's the last warning. You need an idea to when Divorce Court returns, Louise tries to get revenge on Ty. So what am I supposed to do? Have him strip and walk out of here naked? You're acting like a bunch of little kids playing marbles. That's not marriage. Grow up. Are you getting divorced? Do you need Judge Maybelline Ephraim's help settling a dispute? If you want to be a guest on Divorce Court, call 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. Divorce Court is back in session as the judge questions Ty about cheating on his wife, Louise. Tell me about the adultery that she's accused you of. Adultery was um, the last time that I got kicked out the house. Um, I went back to live with my mom. Um, we was away for was about two months, maybe. 30 days. And um, I say, uh, I met someone else. 
you know what I'm saying, and I could talk to, you know what I'm saying, with my problems and all that. I mean, we, of course. we got along for a while, I mean. For 30 days, but you didn't live with him. It was too much, Your Honor. All right. And, Anybody uh, can get along with somebody for two months. You got along with her for two months, didn't you? Of course. The problem with this case is too many outsiders looking in. Your Honor. Kathy, Miss K, tried to come to live at my house when we lived on Woodward, and that's why I said that's why we have problems because they're always trying to be up in our business. His his family. You that's put why people I moved in our business. She tried to come you live at our house, and I told you her have no. problems no, because no, right? neither one of you has learned and understood that marriage, everything is not going to be smooth, and you're not going to be happy every day, and the result that's is true. not always leave. You need that's to learn true. something else when problems are going on in your marriage, Mouse. other than leave and packing your bags. You be quiet. You said all I need you to say. So now it's clear to me, abundantly clear to anybody, that the marriage is over. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what else can I do for you other than end you this marriage? You can get me back my stuff. What he, stuff? He took my he took my camcorder when he left, and the only reason why I didn't fight him for the day that he took it when he <laughs> called me out all, my that's name not your is because he would have broke it. Yes, it was. Who bought your camcorder? No, Who bought the camcorder? Your camcorder. What my else camcorder. can I do for you, Miss Crocker? Um, his clothes. Um, I went his to, clothes? Exactly. I bought everything he's got on right now, including probably you the other words. You want me to give t-shirt. you your husband's clothes? Yes, ma'am. I'll sell them. I'll give them to. I'll give them to the. I'll give it to the <laughs> Salvation Army. You are asking this court to give you your husband's clothes. Which one? Yeah, the ones on his back? Do exactly. Do down to the shoes that what I got the receipt do for. Down to the shoes on his feet. Yes, ma'am. I wrote a text. So what am I supposed to do? Have him strip and walk out of here naked? I I don't care. I don't care. Give him a flag wrap around his butt. I don't care. I don't feel how. You didn't earn that. I have never heard of such. You want me to order you to give him, want him the clothes off his back? Yes, ma'am. And you married him? Unfortunately, yes. And this is the father of your child? Unfortunately, yes. And you want him to walk out of here naked? Yeah, basically. (laughs) What else? Um, this right here, I don't know if he wants to show you, is my ring that my mom a had ring. to get out of a pawn shop. What ring is that? This is my engagement ring that he got me. The engagement ring? That he pawned. And I did, and I thought I lost it. I couldn't find it till my mom bring it to me out the pawn shop. First of all, I did not pawn a ring. Tell me about the engagement ring. Let me see the ring. Tell me First about that, all, Mr. Crawford. Pawn, uh, well, that's the engagement ring I, I bought for her, engaged her before we got married. But she says her mother somehow found it in a pawn shop and she had to buy it back. You know anything about it? Being, uh, as far as it being in the pawn shop, I don't know. I wouldn't pawn, I wouldn't pawn my wife's engagement ring. But you're not, I wasn't my that desperate stuff, for money. Didn't you? I wouldn't. Uh. We're not talking about your sister's stuff right now. You want to bring in your sister, your mother, his mother, his sister. Exactly. We're talking about you, you and Miss Crockett. This is not their divorce. I can't divorce you from the whole family. You do that. Oh, I will. Well, I'm just, I'm, that's just showing that he's done it before. I don't, so if you know, I we're talking mind. about, can you do we stay on the subject, we're talking about this engagement ring. Your divorce does not give this court jurisdiction over everybody in the family. And what about the camcorder? I bought the camcorder. It was my camcorder. When she kicked me out, I felt that that was something that I can take with me to, uh, I took it. I took the camcorder to the pawn shop. That's one thing I can say. I so you pawned the camcorder? I pawned the camcorder. Where is it now? It's in the pawn shop. So it's in the pawn shop still. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell the court? <clears throat> yes, I had. Um, Mr. Crockett, the she's car. quiet a moment. The car. What about yeah, the car? Yeah, you should have said something then. The car. Okay, the car's in you both of our names. The, the um. The car's car in both, both names. Of our names. It's his name first, and then my name second. But I'm the one that makes the payments on it. I'm the one that writes the checks, pays the cash. The tags are in my name. The insurance is in my name. Besides that, he didn't. He, he ain't even got a valid driver's license. Okay. So are you still so paying can't. for the car? Yes, ma'am. And I want it out of his name. Somehow you have it in your head that it's all yours because you're the only one who's done anything in this marriage. Yes, ma'am. It wouldn't have lasted I'm the that only long. You're the only one doing I'm anything. I'm the only in this one marriage. trying. The only one who worked. It the wouldn't have lasted that long. Together. Let me tell because you. Because you're in the our only own one house. Doing I think that I've heard enough. The judge renders her verdict when divorce court returns. And an update on the case of Walter Laney versus Janice Laney. Janice Laney used me. He told me he loved me and he wanted to marry me and take care of me. She took advantage of me and uh, she proved herself to be a gold digger. Divorce Court will be back in session in a moment. Divorce Court is back with a verdict in the case of Louise Crockerin versus Ty Crockerin. I 
think that I've heard enough and you've summed it up real good for me. I, 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 I. That's all I have heard throughout this conversation. I, I, I. Somebody told me marriage, you become we, we, we. We would if You we forgot worked. and you forgot. At least he tried from what I can hear. No, he didn't, Your Honor. Oh, you thought you were going to buy your way with him and it didn't last no. forever. <laughs> I'm ready to rule. You ready for my ruling? Yes, ma'am. You sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You will not get the clothes off his back. Marriage is a joint effort. Even during the months that he wasn't working. That's part of marriage. There may be a down period in your life where you won't be working. And if you're married to someone, you would want them to care and provide for you. That's what marriage is. It's not just when things are going well. So therefore, the fact that you bought clothing during those periods when he wasn't working or paid the gas bill and utility bill, so be it. You're not entitled to any reimbursement. The camcorder, you purchase it for the family not for you. Again, you're getting selfish. Now that you're angry with her, I take back my gift to you. You're acting like a bunch of little kids playing marbles. You get mad in the marble game, give me back my marbles. That's not marriage, grow the up. the first time I ever took I didn't ask you to talk. <laughs> grow up, this is not the marble game. When you're in a relationship and you give people gifts, let it be a gift. If it's not a gift from your heart, don't give it. So you gave her the camcorder, it was a gift for the family. The bulk of the family is still over here. She still has the three children and Miss Crockren. The camcorder is still for the family. It's awarded to Miss Crockren. Get it out of the pawn shop. And give it to her. The engagement ring, the uh, reimbursement for the $25 for getting the engagement ring out of the pawn shop, I'm ordering you to reimburse that. I don't buy your story of I don't know how it got there. Somehow. Reimburse her the $25 that she had to pay to get the ring out of the pawn shop. The title to the car, I can't award it. It can't take his name off of it. As long as the car is being financed, the finance company is not going to let his name come off of it. You signed a contract with them. Both of you signed the contract. Both of you are still responsible for it. The only way you can get his name off the title is you get the car refinanced. And if you want to get the car refinanced and get his name off the title, so be it. He'll sign whatever he has to sign for that. But I can't take away the, the uh, finance company's power and authority under their contract. All right? Okay. So the car is awarded to you, but the title you have to deal with on a contractual basis with your lender. Okay. That's my judgment. Courts in recess. When Divorce Court returns, an update on the case of Walter Laney versus Janice Laney. And how old are you, Mrs. Laney? I'm 38. What made you interested in an 80-year-old man? I was lonesome, lonely. Closed captioning for Divorce Court provided by... If you would like to have the judge hear your case in Divorce Court... Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. And now for an update on a previous case in Divorce Court. 80-year-old Walter Laney said he loved Janice, who was less than half his age, but now wanted a divorce because he says she was a gold digger who lied to him. And how old are you, Mrs. Laney? I'm 38. What made you interested in an 80-year-old man? I was lonesome, lonely. Janice Laney used me. He told me he loved me and he wanted to marry me and take care of me. She took advantage of me and uh, she proved herself to be a gold digger. I am wife number eight to him. Janice is not divorced from her first husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this plot thickens. Walter asked the judge to order Janice to pay him back several thousand dollars worth of charges she made on his credit card. But if you gave her the credit card, and told her she could use it. I didn't tell her to use it in the manner of going to no casino, Your Honor. The judge said that some of her charges were valid, but ordered her to repay the rest. All of the charges incurred for gambling, it did not benefit the community, it did not help you, it ruined it. So you will pay those charges. After court, Walter told Janice he never wants to speak to her again, and Janice told him that she will repay her debt $2 at a time for as long as it takes. 
he committed adultery. He committed adultery. He slept with a little white girl that he worked with and then sat there and said that this that it might have been the only time. I don't believe him. I, I'm not getting married again because if I get married again, you know, do I have to sit there and worry about if my stuff's going to get taken from me, if it's going to get pawned? She keeps making me quit my job. How am I going to be able to do anything? I mean, she, she's trying to control my life. Just sign the divorce papers. That's all I want. In today's session of Divorce Court. How old are you? I'm 38. What made you interested in an 80 year old man? I was lonesome, lonely. Janice Laney used me. He told me he loved me. I feel like she took advantage of me. And he wanted to marry me and take care of me. She proved herself to be a gold digger. Your Honor, I am wife number eight to him. Wife number eight? Janice is not divorced from her first husband. No! I was a no because he was still married to his first wife. Oh, this plot thickens. Today, Janice Laney and Walter Laney face off in divorce court. All rise. Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Walter Laney versus Janice Laney. I understand the two of you are before me for a divorce, and Mr. Laney, you want me to decide some other issues for you. What, how may I help you? You may help me, Your Honor. Uh, I feel like uh, Janice Laney used me. I feel like she took advantage of me, and uh, she proved herself to be a gold digger. What makes you feel that way, Mr. Laney? When I went into this... Uh, marriage with her, the uh, credit cards that I got, and I told her before uh, we even thought about uh, credit cards, I said, I want you to be happy. I'm going to do all the things in my power to make you happy. And don't use the card unless you just have to and you're, you're out at a place. I don't want nobody else helping you to do anything. I have proof to prove that uh, everything that I did for her to show her that I loved her and I wanted her to be dependent on me and, 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 not, and not just uh, just use me like she did. Well, it sounds like she was rather dependent on you, just like you wanted her to be, isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, I did want her to be dependent on me, Your Honor, but I did not want her to take uh, $3,000 and go to the boat and go with her friends. And, and go do where? She went to the casinos. Oh, she went gambling with the money. Gambling with the money, and uh, she went splush with uh, with her friends and everything. And it Splurging was splurging with her friends. Yeah, well, her ex-boyfriend. What proof? She took her ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend went with her on he some of these gambling. He didn't see me with no ex-boyfriend, and, and I did not take the ex-boyfriend. Let me see those bills. Let's see the what they tell me. The uh, that, uh, the detectives that viewed this this case. Hold on a moment, Miss Lady. The detectives that viewed went through that case had all the evidence. And it's all, it's all stated right there, Your Honor. So the charges, let me get this from you. You allowed her to be a signature on your MasterCard. Yes. And you told her there were some conditions to using the yes, card? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And what yeah. were those conditions? Those conditions were unless she was out somewhere and needed and had an emergency so there to was use a, the card. So it's for emergency purposes. That's right. So what makes you think she used you? Is it because of the age difference? How old are you? I think... I think a lot, Your Honor, was due to that because uh, after... Uh, well, how few, old are you, Mr. Mr. I'm Laney? I'm 80 years old. And how old are you, Mrs. Lane? I'm 38. You're 80 and you're 38? Yes, ma'am. What made you interested in an 80-year-old man? Well, I used to stay next door to him. Uh-huh. And uh, he would always come out and watch me and stuff. And two weeks after he met me, he told me he loved me. And he wanted to marry me and take care of me. Your he didn't Honor, want to work. Your and Honor, and while, your, was, your while Honor, you were standing not... next door to him, two weeks after you met him, did you your know Honor, what he was doing? Hold true. on, Mr. Laney. Let me hear from her a minute, okay? Two weeks after he met you, he told you he loved you. He used you. to always sit outside and watch me. Uh-huh. Watch when I come and go. And one night, I spent the night at my cousin's house so we can go to church the next morning. He called me over there that Sunday when he come from church and he told me he was sick. He had ulcers and his ulcers had made him deathly ill because I didn't come in that night and he was wondering where I was and that he loved me and he wanted to marry me and take care of me. Okay, and he now, didn't want me to have to want for nothing. Now, that's yeah. what he said. Yeah. Hold on a minute. 
That's what he said to you. He yes. loved you. He mm -hmm. wanted to marry you. Didn't want you to want for anything. Right. My question but, to you was, what did you say to him? What made you interested in marrying him? Were you well, watching him for two weeks too? I was lonesome, lonely, and I felt like, you know, he did really did. you feel did. like he had a little money? No. Your Honor? Money was never a factor. Your Honor? So, hold on. So why were you no. interested in him? Because no. I wanted a companion. So you didn't have any interest in him? He just no. told you he wanted to marry you and wanted to take care of you and wanted to love you, but yes. you had and no love sounded, interest in him? It sounded no. very interesting yeah. to me. It sounded Your very interesting to no. you. So marriage no. now no. is an interesting affair. Not no. now, because I grew to love him. Why did yeah. it sound interesting to you that this older man because wanted I didn't to have, love you? I hadn't you? had no one to ever tell me that they wanted to take care of me and sit me down and buy me a car and do oh, all this. Okay, stuff. now yeah. we're going to get yeah. it. So it sounded yeah. like a great proposition to you because he wanted to give you some things that no one else had ever offered you. Right. Did you offer her all of these things and tell her you wanted to give her that? I didn't offer her a lot of things. I wanted her to, uh, for her and I, to be joint in most everything that we did. I have. Did you uh, tell her you wanted to sit her down? I didn't tell her to sit. I wanted to sit her down. Did you tell her she to buy a car? She wanted to go to work. She bought a car. Did she you buy? Bought, I bought a she car. She bought a three car. years after we was married mm. because he did not buy mm. me one. I didn't mm. have transportation where we would stay. The bus did yep. not run out there close to where we stay. You have to walk a, a little ways. And he has three vehicles. He didn't let mm. me drive neither one. Your Honor, that's not I true. I had to pay him to that take me to true, work. That is not true, Your Honor. I had to pay him gas money that is not true, on Fridays Your Honor. for taking me to work. Hold on, Mr. Laney. Let her finish. I had to pay him gas money on Friday. So you paid yeah. him to take you to work? I had to pay him gas That's money. That's not true, He did Your not Honor. pick me That's up That's why, Mr. Work. Laney, let me hear from her. He picked me up on a few occasions. And he stopped. I had to get someone to take me home. I saved my money and got my income tax money, and I bought me a vehicle. So, so you bought your own car? Yes, yeah, so I can have transportation to and from work. Well, explain these credit up. card charges. I knew some of it. I didn't use a whole lot of them. Who was going to the your, casino? Your I Honor. went to the casino. Your Honor. And who were you going to the casino with? By myself. Your, your it was Honor. not with no boyfriend. It wasn't your, nobody implicated in there. Your, I went on my your, own. And it wasn't your, with your cousin? No. And it wasn't with your sister? No. That's Me and my sister the went, but we said, not, the detective was no. not at the no. casino no. to see what I did. The well, why did you call a detective because the detective your wife was going to the casino? They, they went over this account because she overdrawn. I would have never known about it. She didn't know how much the, the face the value of was. the card was. So she overdrawn, and old Howell called me and told me, say, you've overdrawn on your, your, your card. And I say, I haven't even used the card. Now, how do you know she gave the money That's to this other person? Know. Well, this is, this is what uh, I, I only got that from the, the detective. The detective was not there. He oh, don't so know you don't know who she gave the money to. No, but there's $2,859.54 of charges at the drugstores and the casino, most of the charges being at the casino. What's the drugs charges for? I have migraine headaches. And going and to the casino the and gambling yeah. and helps yeah. your migraine headaches, is yeah. right? Yeah. That's what the doctor yeah. prescribed? No. The doctor prescribed the medication. But the migraine headaches didn't stop you from gambling? No. Didn't affect yeah. your gambling? No, ma'am. Did Honor. you tell Mr. Laney that you were no. using this credit card? Yes. No, every time Your you Honor. went? Not every time. No, Your Honor. Did you tell him you were using this credit card all the time? No, Not Your Not all Honor. the time. Why were you using because the credit card instead of me. cash? He never did ask me. He gave it to me and told me I can use it as I saw fit. And you saw yeah. fit to gamble with it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. ma'am. When Divorce Court returns, Walter accuses Janice of being married to another man. Janice is not divorced from her first husband. No! Your Honor, I am wife number eight to him. Oh, this plot thickens. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. Divorce Court is back in the case of 38-year-old Janice Laney, who is divorcing her 80-year-old husband, Walter, because she says he won't give her the things she wants. So, Mr. Mr. Laney, were you buying her when you offered her the credit card? No, Your and Honor. And then, uh, then I, it fell I, back on I, you? I began to know and fall in love with Janice as time went by, but now that had me to lose a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in you. Sure I have another statement. What's the other statement? I have another statement here that? that I would like for you to take a look at. 
Janice is not divorced from her first husband. I didn't and get a I divorce. went through no. I'm a no. I've gone through, I've Don't gone tell through me that. all of this. I'm a no. I've gone you a through bigamist? All of, no. This when I not, married my first husband, this I came is not to a find no. out. Hold on a second. This is not a no, Your Honor. Let me see. When this. I came to Hold when on, I Miss Laney. Let me see what I'm looking at. I was a no because he was still married to his first wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this plot thickens. This says a default judgment was entered in 94. When and did the two of you marry? Never rent. We, we were married in 94, 94, October 27. 94. But did you ever see a judgment of annulment? I went to the lawyer and I signed it. A judgment of nullity? Uh-huh, because we was a... not legally married. That is not he was a... still married to his first wife, and I found mm -hmm. out. So what you're saying is that your marriage to this other man, your other husband, your first husband, was annulled. Right. So when you married no. Mr. Laney, it was valid. It was a no, no when I married him. Did you check the courthouse to see yes, if there was I an did, annulment? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Yes, I did. It's no an annulment. No it's annulment. No annulment, Your Honor. It's a no. Well, Mrs. Uh, Laney, I don't know if it has or hasn't. I have to take your word for mm -hmm. it now because I don't mm -hmm. have any other proof. This doesn't mm -hmm. prove to me that she didn't get the marriage annulled. This simply mm -hmm. says that there was a petition mm -hmm. for uh, dissolution filed, mm -hmm. and the minutes and don't say... Uh, that a judgment was granted. It this was is your writing granted. that says no degree, no decree of divorce. It was not granted, Your Honor. But that's your writing. That's not yeah. the clerk's no. writing. No, it was at, at the clerk's office when I asked the clerk. I understand yeah. that, but the document mm -hmm. itself simply says default. It doesn't yeah. tell me. Default. Right. Right. Your yeah. Honor, I am wife number eight to him. Wife number eight? No, no she's not, Your Honor. I was well, married. What number is she to you? No. Wife number no. seven, no. right after, shortly no, after Your I married Honor, him. No, that's not true. That's not well, true, Well, hold on. The only reason he was bringing that up to me was to determine the validity of your marriage to him. I don't know if he was wife number... Your wife number no. eight? Yes, I no, Or number Honor. seven? It really no. doesn't matter as long as... Are you alleging that any of his divorces were not valid? I don't no. know. Yes. I he didn't just, bother to check. Honor. Wife number seven just your wrote Honor. me a letter, certified letter. And what's she tell me? Your Honor. Was, I, hold told on, me Lane. that I was wife number eight, that he liked the 15-year-old girl. Okay, now, le hold on a sec. Let me ask you... Let me say something to you. You've just made an accusation based upon a letter you received from somebody that you didn't know. You didn't know wife number seven. I don't seven. even know Well, one. let me suggest something to you. Don't ever repeat accusations like that against people without some type of substantiation. Mm. That's not very nice. And it could cause this man serious mm. problems just because you're angry. That's a very mm. serious allegation. Well, and if you thought letter. it was something wrong, if you thought that he had done that, would you still, mm. wouldn't you check into well, it? Well, I can't say no. that he didn't do it because I mm. have a... Uh, a testimony here from a friend of mine where when she was pregnant, he pulled her in a house. He was in a house. He took up her groceries. He pulled her to her and tongue kissed her. That's not true, He did true, another Your friend Honor. of mine well, like that. He went behind. And, and he tongue kissed her. Takes two to do that. Well, he did uh, another friend of mine. That's not true, she, came, she called the house that's one day. Not, and tell and me she, what's the significance of all this related to you him, running up these bills. She asked him to uh, rent her a car. But he told her to ask me, and then he did it to her, and because that's she didn't pay him, he took true, her to small Honor. claims court, but he never got his money. Okay, true, hold Honor. on, Mr. Laney. Now, I guess you told me all that to try to smear Mr. Laney's character. No, I'm not trying to smear his well, character. Well, then tell me what was your purpose in telling me that. I'm just bringing up what was said, Why? what was true. You just, you're in a habit of bringing up what people say about people? No, just but to be bringing here, it up? He, he got mad. I believe this was true because of the fact that after she told me and I questioned him about it, he didn't want to ever say anything to her. He was mad about it. Well, if it wasn't true, he had no reason not to be okay, mad about it. Okay, now tell me what does that have to do with you running up these charges over there at the casino? Nothing. He has went to the casino, too, with me. He didn't tell you that. Well, you tell me. That's he what I'm asking. Tell me something like the, that. Me and him has been to the casino together. So, you've got, so some of these charges were when he was with you? He has spent some yeah. of the money. Did you go to the casino with him? To eat. To no, eat. didn't have him. We only, been on the boat The only together. thing... That I haven't spent a single dime at the casino pulling no, no. I won uh, some money once. He got the money. He went and cashed it in. And you wasn't on the casino when you I did that. The I issue don't... was not whether he was at the casino, whether he cashed the money in. The issue was, did he use a credit card no, at I the did casino? No, I not, Your Honor. I Tell did me not. that. I don't know if he no. used it at the casino. Did he but use I know this I credit did. card? No, Your Honor. He had one, and I no. had one, so I can't no. say if he used it or not. All the I charges here are, are 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 your signature. But those are the ones that I use. Your Honor, here, here's another statement, and it's signed by a notary. And uh, I had to start to doing things when I lost trust in Janice because she, would do, she wasn't coming home at night. 
Uh, and here's I a, would come here's home a statement. To lock the door. Here's a statement where I borrowed. On, I borrowed five hundred dollars for her. And helping, I paid her you? helping her with the car and Give helping her with, with it was some not more issues. Me with no car. And this is signed. <laughs> this is signed by her. That was not helping she me only no paid, car. He never she did only paid me two hundred dollars. All right, I need you. I don't need both of you talking at the same time. Just tell me what is this paper supposed to tell me? A loan that she got from me. So and you loaned her some money. Five hundred dollars on a uh, on a credit card, and uh, she only paid me two hundred dollars of that money back. But if you gave her the credit card and told her she could use it. I didn't tell her to use it in the manner of going to no casino, Your Honor. And I did, not, I did not know that she was buying drugs like she was buying drugs. Did you know she had migraine headaches? I knew she had migraine headaches, but you know what? This lady here could sit down and think of something ailing her. She had operations on her hand. I had carpal she tunnel had, uh, syndrome because I She I'm had uh, hysterectomy. And every time that she had an operation, Behind the operation came a whole bunch of painkillers. Well, you know and what? I because behind a hysterectomy comes a whole bunch of pain. <laughs> Divorce court returns. The judge renders her verdict. And an update on the case of Dominic Vasquez versus Eli Zimmerman. What is a tight pit bull? <laughs> Look at these ham hocks right here. Look at that's tight. It's pretty tight, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs>
I did not know this about him because I married him a month after I met him. So she knew she could push my buttons. Cause what are you talking about? I told you every single time, I love you, I'm with you. Although Eli wanted to stay on good terms with Dominique, he was desperate to keep his beloved dog, AJ. I was homeless, I had a lot of hard times. And, and that you dog kept the never dog. that dog never went hungry. That dog slept where I slept. That dog went into restaurants where I went. That dog rolled everywhere with me. This is the tightest pit bull you ever see. What is a tight pit bull? <laughs> well, like, okay, check him out. Come here, Eddie. <laughs> Look at these ham hocks right here. Look at that's tight right there. He's strong. He's beautiful. Oh, he is. He's pretty tight, Your Honor. He's yeah. <laughs> that dog's been moving around with you the whole time you've owned him. He's not ever had a stable home. If well, you love dog... him, then you'll let me take him. This man said, I'll sacrifice. Food, I'll sacrifice shelter, I'll sacrifice my own self for this dog. The judge agreed that AJ would be better off with Eli. As they left court, Eli tried to talk to Dominique, but she refused. Since then, Eli has entered into a new relationship, and he and AJ got parts in a TV show. I feel very disappointed. Uh, I, uh, I made a mistake or two and uh, stayed in uh, uh, how much I uh, loved uh, Janice and uh, I think that the, the judge uh, just ruled in the wrong uh, decision. Well, I'm not, ha I'm not satisfied with the decision because he gave me the credit card and I believe I should have been able to use it as I saw fit, whether it was gambling or clothes or whatever. In today's session of Divorce Court, after a year and a half of marriage, Elizabeth Scott says she can't take any more. Her husband, Charles, is a sex addict. And the only time you could have sex with me is when I was sleeping because I wouldn't touch you otherwise, you filthy thing. She says he spent all her money on sex. How much money did you invest in phone sex? Close to $4,000. $4,000 in phone bills for sex? then gave her a disease while she was pregnant. And when they tested me because they couldn't figure out why I kept having contractions, why the baby was in distress, they told me that I had gonorrhea. Now Charles has a new girlfriend. So you're Mr. Scott's girlfriend, and you used to be the babysitter for Mrs. Scott. And Elizabeth wants justice. And I can't believe you have the broken, diseased manhood to bring this up in court. In today's session of Divorce Court, Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. <clears throat> Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Elizabeth Scott versus Charles Scott. I'm advised after a year and five months from saying I do, you're ready to say I don't, Mrs. Scott. Why? Ma'am, my husband's sexual addictions, his addictions to pornography and internet sex and phone sex destroyed me as a woman, as a mother, and as a provider for my children. Your husband has an addiction to internet sex, phone sex? Several addictions, Your Honor, and, and they, they were pretty extensive. They destroyed us financially, which is part of the reason that we're no longer together. Mrs. Scott, what do you have to say about that? As far as the addictions themselves, yeah, they were there. They addictions were... are just... I mean, you addicted means you're there well, all the time. Well, they're not actual addictions themselves as far as it was a, it was a, an occurrence because of the control factor she tried He's to impose denial. on me. The control factor from her? Yes. He's she tried, she no, tried, no, tried no. to have a power trip as far as... A power trip, She wanted Your Honor. all the money. She I was wanted a subservient all wife. I had to kiss the ground. He walked no, he on he wanted you to him. fulfill his sexual fantasies, he's saying. They were humiliating, Your Honor. He wanted me to do awful sexual things that no woman should have to do. His like wife what? What sexual things did he want you to do that no woman should have to do? Sexual things that I told him I was uncomfortable with, that I felt disgusting doing. And you said you'd it be was, willing to try it if you didn't like it. it, then it you would well, not I didn't like it, and that's why you kept doing it again, and that's why I didn't want to it do was it again. Discontinued. And the only time you could have sex with me is when I was sleeping because I wouldn't touch you otherwise, you filthy thing. You, yeah. you never took a bath. <laughs> so you wouldn't touch your husband otherwise, and the only way he, you could have sex was He it, doesn't shower. This, your Honor, he, from the day we met, he lied to me about who he was, 
how he lived. Let's talk about lie. You what talked you? about a rape case that you had. Then you said you had. Chlamydia there are crime. charges brought up on that. You said there you are charges. It is recorded in the San Diego had. Police Department about that. How dare you? What are you and talking then, about? A rape then, case? How, what does that have to do with this? And then for a point that she's getting. Ready I was to bring assaulted up on my 19th birthday. Hold on. Let me see. Friends. Let me get a point she was getting ready to bring up, trying to say that I gave her gonorrhea when in fact she was the one. Oh, I've got proof. Right here. Right here. She thinks that you gave her gonorrhea. Correct. When you met her, she told you that she had been raped. Right. And that she had contracted a venereal disease as right. a result of the rape. Right. He's and lying. that she had it treated and that nothing had been come up. And that, later that it on had down not the been road, solved. Right. He's lying. And later on down the road, she comes back during her pregnancy with Braxton Hicks and the Hick, Braxton Hicks labor. Oh, came back with her you pregnancy filthy during trailer with... trash loser, you. What? Stop, Mrs. Scott. I can't understand what he's saying. She came back later on and what? Later on during the pregnancy, prior, about two months prior to her actually giving birth, she started having Braxton Hicks false labor. They did tests on it, and it came up to be that there was gonorrhea in her system. So she was tested during the pregnancy, right. all through discovered the pregnancy. that she had gonorrhea, right. and she says you gave it uh -uh. to her. Right. No. And you say that she contracted the gonorrhea from, from the rape. He's from lying. The rape and it He's lying. Dormant. All right. Well, how do you know that because she I have contracted proof. gonorrhea from him? First of all, because um, when I got pregnant, when I was raped, as, as, a, as a survivor of rape, I, w I was tested. Was this how long ago was this before the pregnancy? Maybe three months. Oh, all right. Um, a, a I'm woman glad you who survived is, it. Yes, a woman who is assaulted. All right, and I can't believe you have the broken, diseased manhood to bring this up in court, for which you should be slapped by a well, real man. But if it's too much he, for you, Miss Scott, you don't have to take it any further in terms he, of that. I was tested, Your Honor. All right. I had embarrassing, humiliating tests done to me. I had proof that I was tested for sexually transmitted diseases from the time I was assaulted by these two men up until the time I was six and a half months pregnant, all of which came out negative. All of which came out negative, and when I went to the hospital on Valentine's Day by myself, because, because he wouldn't work. go with me. I had to work on It days. was at nighttime. The hospital was 25 minutes away. He made me go by myself. And that's when you determined that you had, they, it was discovered you had no, gonorrhea. They tested me, Your Honor. And when they tested me, because they couldn't figure out why I kept having contractions, why the baby was in distress, it was five days later they told me that I had gonorrhea. And my Joe, witness, let me see that, please. My witness was in the room when I found out. My witness is a witness to my character as a faithful, subservient wife who practically kissed the, the ground this man walked on. I have proof, Your Honor. He is lying. This man should be exposed. Did you show this to him? He I've knows that it. it's in there. I've he knows it. that it's in there. I can't believe you have the to lie about something like that with it in, on paper. What, what do you think you're going to accomplish? The same thing you were going to try to accomplish by bringing it up. Nothing. I didn't even bring it up. What, what are you, so you were stupid? Ready to Your memory is like, like the rest of you? Just look at you. Did you use a word in this courtroom? I'm, I apologize. You I'm do sorry. not use that language, yes, no matter right. how angry you get. I apologize. I just think it's, he's not even a man to bring up something like that. You have a witness, you said? I have a witness to my character, to the fact I was faithful, and she was in, she was two feet away from me in my kitchen when the doctor called me to tell me I had gonorrhea. Please, let your witness have, step forward. He had to have this taken care of off the record because he knew the military would prosecute him. No. What's your name? Uh, Jesse Kneff. Jesse yes. Kneff? Yes. What can you add to this? Um, I would go to visit while he was at work, and Elizabeth would tell me, um, like when she got the phone bill um, of all the calls that he had made um, overseas um, for the porn, um, you know, how was she going to get the money? And he was racking it up and doing stuff. And then when I was there, when the doctor called and she got word um, that she did get gonorrhea, um, it was like her life just shattered right there because she knew she had kids and she knew, you know, this baby was on the way. Did she show you the bills? The phone bills, or did she just tell you about them? No, I saw one of the phone bills when she was um, still in San Diego. Um, and it was into the 500s. And the, this is a phone years. sex? Right. Sex were line. you paying for these calls, Mr. Scott? Yes. At I was the, the one working. You were the one working? Yes. I had just given birth to a baby. Of so course you, you were, were paying working. the phone bill? Yes. And did you all have enough, uh, that kind of money that you could put out $500 no. a month for a phone bill for sex? Technically, no, but no. I did. We didn't even have furniture, Your we Honor, did. because he had spent so much money on it. Thank this. you, Mrs. Kneff. Yeah. Thank you for shedding some light on it.
My family didn't go without food. Yes, we did, Your no, Honor. No, you did not. Yes, well, we you did. Said your, she said, alluded to the fact that your finances suffered as a result of your phone The finances addiction. didn't drop completely yes, off. Yes, they did, Your Honor. What they did is they got what cut suffered? in half. How much over the course of 17 months, it's a 17-month marriage, right? Mm -hmm. How much money did you invest in phone sex, cyber sex, etc.? $1,700. Lie? $1,700. That is a lie. How much do you say? I say close to $4,000. $4,000 in phone bills for sex? When divorce court resumes, Elizabeth talks about the pain her marriage has caused her. Ever since I've been separated from him, I have not been able to respond to a man the way that a man deserves to be responded to. And Charles' new girlfriend takes the witness stand. So you're Mr. Scott's girlfriend? And you used to be the babysitter for Mrs. Scott. Are you getting divorced? Do you need Judge Maybelline Ephraim's help settling a dispute? If you want to be a guest on Divorce Court, call 1-877-311-2222. Divorce Court continues as the judge investigates just how much money Charles spent on cyber sex and telephone pornography during his marriage to Elizabeth. How much is the credit card bill now? You have a credit card bill? I have a, a copy of the most recent one. I'm $63 over my four dollars to $500 limit because the interest payments May on I this. see that, Joe? And that's the only thing that was being charged on that bill? What no. he was doing, so he, for most of, for the first couple of months, he was <clears> stupid <throat> about it. He didn't figure it out that I would, fit, you know, I would find these charges on my card. I reported my card stolen. I had we confronted desperate... about it. Excuse me. Hello. Okay. You Intelligent your person card talking. Stolen in what? I, I had desperately <laughs> tried to get the records, but I was not able to get them in time. I have proof that I, I did try. One thousand two hundred eighty-six dollars and sixty-one cents for one month. The no. account, when that's I picked, a lot of money. When yeah, I it is. Him I'd like to see time, it if it was Honor, me. Is that he emptied my bank accounts? He, he, he did all the cash advances he could because he knew that I could not pin him on that. He stole my pin number. I reported no. my card stolen twice. Cash advances? Yes. So what do you think you, do, you should do about this? I, I feel I might owe her a maximum of $500. I don't towards agree with maximum that. Maximum of $500? I don't yes, agree because with as, that. Well, I don't. as well as the payment of $500, I also signed over a 1985 Mercury Wrong, Cougar Wrong, Your Honor, because I paid for it. With a verbal agreement. I paid for it. That the Let Visa him card finish. You did not pay for, I paid it. for it. That came from my severance pay nope. from the Marine Corps. No, I paid for Stop it. Stop the bickering. I Let paid, him finish. I paid a total of $4,700 by the time everything was paid off for the car. No. Okay, so you gave her a 1985 Mercury. Mercury Cougar. No. Cougar. Right. He's lying. And she had the verbal As agreement. As compensation for no. the bills. No. Right. I went to work. We had a house. We had furniture. We had food and diapers. And we were not starving for anything until he kept the these Visa bills card. put up. No, I, I was making enough money. I wouldn't need to put it on Value the Visa City card. Furniture. You made okay, a purchase. What, what you four thousand dollars was not put on the card for the cyber sex. Not so all you of used it. the card for other things. Well Correct. of course. We would right. go grocery furniture shop purchase. and when when at times when I wasn't trying to spit fire at this man for being so revolting, we would go out to dinner or we would have friends or we would you know, we would do things together. The two of you certainly had two different interpretations Correct. of what marriage should be. Correct. She didn't anticipate what your sexual desires were. Right. And it seemed that you were a little insensitive to what she expected. To a degree, I guess, yeah. To a degree. And you would seem that you would understand since, you, on the one hand, you married her, right. knowing that she had been a victim of a rape. Right. And knowing that she was pregnant. Right. That showed a level of sensitivity on your part. And she told you about what she was going through. Right. So you should have known and been understanding to know that a woman who had experienced that would not be as willing nor of the same frame of mind to get off into the sexual fantasies which you wanted. Because to her, just... that was a further extension of Thank you. the violation of her body Thank that she had endured. Right. Thank and you so had much. He could not that, understand that. She said that. she would try, and if she didn't like it, then we would but continue. But he repeatedly, not forced is not a good word, he repeatedly... No. Um, asked demanded that I do these things and if I did not agree to his demands I would go to sleep and he would come and he would have sex with me in my sleep the way he wanted to have sex with me I said this is hurting me what you're doing is hurting me it is hurting me physically it is hurting me emotionally and it is hurting me as a woman
I, I was not, ever since I've been separated from him, I have not been able to respond to a man the way that a man deserves to be responded to. I know that we have another witness. She, Are you a witness? She has nothing to say. She didn't meet us until after we How were separated. How do you know she has nothing to say, Ms. Scott? She used Scott? to babysit for her She used to work we for separated. me. I fired her because she didn't show up two days in a row, and I lost, do you si know well, I lost significant oh, income because of her, and I fired her. Mrs. Scott, why are you afraid to allow this witness to talk? She has nothing to say. She has, and anything that comes out of her mouth is a lie because she didn't know him until after I fired her, which means she doesn't know anything of about what happened in okay. our marriage. Well, may I ask her if she has something to say? Go Let right me ahead. see if she has anything to say. Please tell me. Do you mind? What is your name? Jackie Parrish. What is your relationship to these people? Tell me. She's sleeping with him. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to butt my mouth shut. I'm sorry. I know you're angry, I know you're hurting, and I sympathize with you. But at the same time, I have to keep some order in the court. I agree, ma'am. I'm sorry. This All is right? just really frustrating that she thinks she has something to say. She knew me for three months, did not know him until but after. Maybe she's going to say something about him. Just give her a chance. Let's see what she has to say. Yes, ma'am. What's your relationship? She cut you off. I didn't hear that. Currently, he's my boyfriend, yes. So you're Mr. Scott's girlfriend? Yes. Get anybody back. And you used to be the babysitter? Yes. For Mrs. Scott? Yes. Now, tell me about the issues in the case. Your what Honor. about the cyber sex and the phone bills that Mr. Scott ran up? You know anything about those? Not offhand. You don't know no. anything about that? No. But you yes. were the babysitter. She never explained anything, any of that to me. But now you're with him. She knows about them. I know She said she doesn't know. How much does she know? Time. The whole thing. I know the fact that he's not doing it no more. Is he still doing it? No. It's because he's got you to do all his perverted, humiliating things no for him because you can't do anything better. Ms. Scott, you don't know what they're doing in their household. I know what he's like, Your Honor, and I no, know even don't. when he's at his best, he still demands humiliating things. All right, thank you, Ms. Parrish. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a break and give this some thought. When divorce court returns, the judge decides whether Charles must repay Elizabeth for the phone sex charges he made on her credit card and an update on the case of Sherry Burks versus Alvin Burks. He hit me. He tried to push me out of the car. Stop lying. He Sherry, then stop bit lying. Me. He you bit you. Stop. He then bit stop and lying. then took off. No, I didn't, Your Honor. Divorce court is back as the judge renders her verdict in the volatile case of Elizabeth Scott versus Charles Scott. Let me start out by saying that, Mrs. Scott, um, I know that you've been a victim of a very horrible crime, and it takes a lot to get over it. Um, and sometimes, in a marriage, we try to use that as a way to escape from some of the things that life has given us in terms of the bad things we run into from one relationship to another relationship. And I think that's what you did in this case, and it probably was a mistake. Although Mr. Scott at that time was offering you the, the security and the comfort that you needed, but because you didn't really know him as a person and didn't really know this other side of him, again, you allowed yourself to get into a situation that caused you some harm. That's why it's so important to get to know people um, without the surface knowledge before you enter into a marriage. Because marriage is a commitment. And our society, when you marry, it puts certain responsibilities on you and certain obligations that may or may not be what we call fair. But in this particular case, it probably will seem unfair. But the debt was incurred on the credit card during the marriage. The vehicle was purchased during the marriage, which makes it a community asset. Both of you were entitled to the car. Both of you have to pay on the debt. Mr. Scott, in your testimony, too, revealed that he's paid something on the credit card obligation, and all of it is not for cyber sex. I can't punish him for having an addiction that caused you all some financial problems. It's no different than a person who would be an alcoholic who overspends or a shopaholic who goes to some department store and overspends and causes the marriage financial ruin. It's no different. Um, 
So in this situation, the court is of the opinion that you have been adequately compensated and there has been fairness when he gave you the vehicle and that you have to assume the debt. So the court is not going to require Mr. Scott to pay any more on this debt and the court denies your request for the same and declares that both of you have been adequately compensated. That is the judgment of the court. When Divorce Court returns, an update on the case of Sherry Burks versus Alvin Burks. Your Honor, she is lying. Sherry is a very dramatic person. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. And now for an update on a previous case in divorce court. Sherry Burke said she tried to make her marriage to Alvin work and ignored his angry outbursts. But after the death of their son, Sherry said Alvin's temper got worse and she had to leave. First incident where I was hit, Your Honor, was when I was pregnant. Are you serious? Your Honor, she is lying. With a major black eye and a contusion on the side of my head. Sherry is a very dramatic person. He hit me. He tried to push me out of the stop car. Lying. You, he Sherry, stop lying. He did stop bit lying. He bit you. Stop. He then bit stop me and lying. then took off. No, I didn't, Your Honor. Sherry brought Alvin to court to get back half the money she spent on their son's headstone. You're arguing over furniture and furnishings that were purchased with money given to you due to a very, very sad event, the death of your two-month-old son. After they left court, Sherry relocated to another state, and Alvin plans to buy a house and spend more time with his other son. I'm not upset with the woman for her decision. I think she's probably right. Yes, he's getting off totally scot-free. I will personally see you burn in hell. Tough. In today's session of Divorce Court, Tyrone thought his marriage to Marietta would last forever. But after four months, the marriage was on the rocks. He moved out, and that's when the trouble really started. He moved out, and um, I was messing with somebody else, and in this time period, I got pregnant. She told Tyrone the baby was his, but a paternity test revealed that she was lying. Did you tell him that he may not be the father of this child? No, she never told me I told, told me him that. that I was pregnant and I was not sure who the father was. I stayed with her and took care of her for nine months thinking that that child was mine. I, I knew in my heart that it wasn't his child. Now Tyrone says he can't live with the pain of Marietta's betrayal, and he's here to face her in today's session of Divorce Court. Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. This is a matter of Tyrone Pearson versus Marietta Pearson. I'm advised that the two of you were married for four months and then separated. And since then, there has been a series of separation for the last three years and attempts at reconciliation leading to your last separation about two months ago. From this volatile marriage, one child was born, and Mrs. Pearson has two other children. You're fighting over a 1991 Chevy Lumina. Mr. Pearson, why do you think you should have this car? The uh, reason why I think I should have the car, Your Honor, because that's the, my only uh, reliable transportation to work, and I can't uh, afford to pay no taxi cab, and I think I suffer enough by paying for a kid that but ain't the fact not, that I'm not paying a cab should, shouldn't be more important than why he should be running in a brand new car and I don't have a car, and I 1991 have 1991 Chevy is a brand new car? Well, to him, he just bought it, and I don't have a car at all. So therefore, I'm paying for three other children, three children that I'm taking care of by myself, and paying a cab, plus paying a babysitter, and he's not helping paying with that Paying a cab either. for whom? 
for me to get back and forth to work because I do have to work. Well, like I said, because he's I, not I, paying I, his child support. Well, like like I said, I think I pay for enough by paying for a kid that's not none of I'm um, taking care of that's not none of mine. What are you talking about? You're paying for a kid that's not none of not none of yours. What the do you one mean? of the other children that she got is um, we took a blood test uh, about three months ago and it come out find out that was not none of mine. You and thought well, it was that your child support? Yeah, I that's thought it was. That's his choice to take care of What about this? That is his choice to take care of that child. But tell me about the child. He didn't have nothing to do with that child. Or the other child that I have that's the not child is now one well, When year. was this child born that he says that he's, you took a blood test When we were ago? separated, I got pregnant, and then we got back together. In one of those separation periods? Yeah. Did you ever tell him that this child was his? I didn't tell him anything. Yes, I never told him she he wasn't the father. Was I never told him that he wasn't the father. She told me it was mine. I don't have to answer to him because I'm matter of fact, I stayed with her even Stop. though... Stop. You think you don't have to answer to your husband no, when you're pregnant? No, when he's... Stop. I'm trying to understand that you have another child, you didn't tell him that he was the father, and you didn't tell him that he wasn't the father. Exactly. No. When you came back, were you pregnant? No, when, when he was, he had moved back, and he was staying in my house for a little bit, and then he moved out, and um, I was messing with somebody else, and then he decided that he wanted to come home, and I messed with him two weeks later, and in this time period, no, I got pregnant. No, she called for me to, to come and, home. And did this you other ever guy tell him her. that you were messing with someone else? Yeah, he knew. Did you tell him that he may not be the father of this child? No, she never told me that. I told him that I was pregnant and I was not sure who the father was. When did you find out she was pregnant? After you and she got back together or before you and she got back together? After me and her had got back together. So you believe that it was your child? Yeah, I thought, she led me to believe because she said she went, she didn't know for sure that whose it was until after she made her first appointment with the doctor. So once how she am saw I that, him Once to she believe? saw the doctor... I went to the doctor appointment with her, to and she told, and she told. Once the doctor gave her her due date, she said, "Now I know who the father of my baby is, and it was you." And I stayed with her and took care of her for nine months, thinking that that child was mine. Is that right, Mrs. Pearson? I, Did you go to the doctor and come back and say, "Now that I know the due date is your child"? Because I went with Correct. her to that doctor. But then he went to the doctor with me to what? A month later, and the doctor gave another due date. And he's such a big old man. He walked out of the hospital talking about it ain't his child. He don't have to be there. But where was? seat right back in my house. How did you, get, now how did you get back into her house? Because I had moved out with my mother's and back into my mom's house. Where you and, I, always and, I, are. and I started seeing somebody else and then she comes over there threatening so to kill So you were seeing someone else too? Threatening to kill herself and uh, talking about if I didn't come back with her she was going to have me arrested this and that. I you had to, back go, and forth I had to get a, blood, a paternity test done on my youngest child before he would give me a divorce that no, I'd been asking no. for for almost two years. That wasn't so the issue. I didn't have the that money this wasn't at the time. His child? I, I knew in my heart that it wasn't his child. When did you know in your heart that it wasn't his child? When my baby, when my baby was come, when she came out and she was growing day by day. So it was after was, her birth, you knew that it wasn't his child? Right. When did you tell him that it wasn't his child? She never did. I never I told him. I asked her the question. Like Would you I please said, let her answer it? Like I said, I never told him the child was his. I never came to him and said, Tyrone, When did you tell him that it child. wasn't his child? I never did, because why should I answer to him and he's not trying to take care of the one child he has? You want me, you want me to give you the answer to that question? Why you should answer to him? Yeah, I would Because he has a right to know whether that's his child or another man's but child. But I also have a right for him to support the dang child he has with me now. That's true. Are you working? Yes, I am. And I've been paying child support ever since the day that my first son has, was born. And you've been separated about two years? Yeah, totally. Yeah, about and you two years. bought this, this car just a couple of months ago? Just a couple of months ago. He's after, not telling after you that he traded after another after car in for sim- this car. When did he trade the other car in? He just traded it in to get the car he has now. What type of car was it? It was a 91 Dynasty. And when did you buy that one? He bought that February of last year. Were you separated or together? Separated. Are you accustomed to answering questions for her? Because she's lying. She hadn't said anything. <laughs> I'm talking about before you asked her when, why, when was we separated. She's lying. No, about I asked her when was the 1991 Dynasty purchase and she had not yet answered. I'm talking, so about, before that. I'm talking about before that question. All right, stop. When did you buy the 1991 Dynasty? He bought the 1991 Dynasty in February of last year. Were you separated or together? We were living in two different houses, but so we that's were legally called separated. married. No, I didn't say were you divorced. Separated means living apart. But it has to be some kind of action for it to be separated. Who said that? Separated. When did you get to be the judge? 
Well, <laughs> I don't have to be a judge. I've been. Well, you do have I... to be. Well, you're wrong. It doesn't have to be a legal action file for you to be separated. Well, I'm glad you understand that. Now no, no, no. You're glad that I know that, that and I'm helping you to understand that. When Divorce Court returns, Tyrone tells the judge about Marietta's disappearing act. Yeah, she ran off with a man at this place that I had got her a job at. She, she goes out to a bar one night and she never returns. Are you getting divorced? Do you need Judge Maybelline Ephraim's help settling a dispute? If you want to be a guest on Divorce Court, call 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. Divorce Court is back in the case of Tyrone Pearson versus Marietta Pearson. Tyrone says he's had enough and is ready to end this marriage. Do you think she needs a car with three children? Yeah, I think she needs, but I think she can pay for one of her own. How long have you been, were you driving the Dynasty or the other I drove car? the Dynasty for almost a year. Almost a year and So you've always months. had the car since you've been separated? Yeah. For over a year and a half? Yeah. And you just but she got... also had the option of using it while we, while even though we was living in two separate homes. When she called me, I did came and gave How her a ride. Not all, use a car. You not got all, your girlfriend sitting in the front not seat. Not all the time, but she, but I did came well, and gave her a ride. That's and that's she that. ran when off with a, yes, she did. Born? She ran off with a man what, at this place that I had got her a job at. She, she goes out to a bar one night and she never returned. The next because time I, I see her was four months later. And when I taped him, let me hear that. When I paged him Wait, to no, no, let me, pick let me, me make sure my I, sister's house. Let, let me make sure I'm understanding this. You got her a job at a factory. At it, that correct. She ran off with a man and from she the went factory. Out, she goes out to a bar with her friends on a Saturday night. And the next time I see her was three, four months later. She, not next When I heard that she had ran off with the guy that, that, that now, I had got her a job. Now, hold on. Let me get this straight. He got a job for you at a factory. After getting the job at the factory, which would enable you to work, which would enable you to pay for a car, you met a man, and you went off with yet another man, and you were gone for four months. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds real fishy to me, but mm -hmm. let me hear your explanation. The only way for me to get back and forth to work is to go over where, where my job is. So I go over there, and I stay with a friend of mine, and then me and this guy ended up getting together, and then they're from there, like, a week later, we moved to Davenport. Did you ever think while you were going away with this man that you met in a week and taking Mr. Pearson's son? I or... didn't meet him within a week. Yes, you did. That's what you just told me. Yes, you did. I said I moved with long. him within a week. Okay, I so... had known this man for four months. No, you haven't. Okay. No, you we haven't. were talking, oh, no, you and... You know, carrying on per conversations and stuff at work. But you move away to, to another city with Mr. Pearson's son. Right. And you don't bother to tell him that you're taking his son away. Right. You didn't say anything wrong with that. Because when I tried to get you a hold of Tyrone, he enough. didn't have time. For I that had, one day, I, for that one week. I was week. going back to this apartment where we stayed at, getting my stuff, you know, slowly, but I was getting it. Well, wasn't no reason for me to go back after that because Mr. Pearson took it upon himself to throw out all my kids' clothes, all my clothes, all my furniture, and all the pots, pans, everything. You I'm guys have really been scratch. acting like two children. You threw no, out no, all I of the furniture didn't throw out, No, the I didn't throw out nothing. The, the, the landlord was, is the pastor of our church, told me to get in touch with her and told her she had a certain amount of time to come get her stuff. So I passed that message on to, to the person that I... were you still living there? Huh? Weren't you still living there? No, I already had, I already had, I had to move out because I didn't want to pay now another month's rent. Oh, so when she left with the friend, you didn't want to pay rent anymore? No, I, I, I didn't see no need. I can't keep up with it. I'm surprised. He was she not wants, even in she my always he wants, to, wants to say, my time. car, my kids, this and that. I'm messing with her. I'm living with her. The point is, when I leave and move back with my mom, who I've always been living with, who she's so much jealous of, she should leave me alone. Don't, don't call me and tell me that you nobody. need... You what need, makes you, you think she's jealous of your mother? Because I, I do more for my mom than I have ever and done for her. And when you do it, why would going, you do more she, for your mother than your wife? I thought the, the because of, said, because of how she is, she don't appreciate I nothing. So. When, I, I, when, I was, when I was, when I was, stop, did I miss something? I thought the marital vows say you leave the mother and father and cling to the wife. They don't use it's that supposed anymore. To be. It's been but a she, long but time she since done, I got she's done more for her mother than she has done for me. And she's you done. Know, the, but I'm handing my mom a hundred dollars every week. But he hands his mom $100 every no, week. No, I ain't. How am I handing her $100 every week and I can't, and I can't afford 
to afford to pay uh, insurance and then let her have a car that um, ain't even paid for yet. And she says you're not paying child support either. So yes, I, don't I know am how paying you do child that. support. I got to pay child support or sit in jail. If I wasn't paying child support, I'd be sitting in jail right now. Let me see what this car looks like. You seem like you have a picture there too, right? This was purchased. I had to borrow Oof. money to purchase this car because the other one went, went out on me. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I see a receipt for a 1993 Dodge Dynasty. I don't see a receipt for a 1991 Chevy Lumina. You said you traded in the Dynasty and they gave you a Lumina. That is the Lumina right there on the picture. I see the picture, but you told me you had a receipt. The receipt says 1993 Dodge Dynasty. There ain't no receipt because the Dynasty was not... It's the motor not... vehicle purchase contract. It's a, look at it. It says 91 Chevy Lumina, too. Purchase agreement for the 91 Chevy Lumina. Well, I'm looking at it. Here, let me see that. Show it to me. Maybe I can't see too well. I don't think so. You don't think so? You, don't, you let me say I can't see too well, but not you. Step back. <laughs> Step now one more. You're getting too close to me. One more. Right. Now, show me where I'm missing it. Motor Vehicle Purchase Agreement. Chevy Lumina, 94 door, 91. Okay. Purchased by me and Sharon Lloyd. All right. Sharon Lloyd? Yeah. Who is that? The co-signer. Did you know that someone else was helping him buy this car? I sure did. You did? Yeah. And I'm not going to sit here. What do you propose I do about that? This car is not paid for. And the owner of the car is still the financing company. Correct. And if you can't afford it, how are you going to pay for this car? But it's easier for me to pay the $73 a week that he's paying rather than to find $1,500 to put down on a car. Much simpler. Okay, and when you put it down on a car, you have to pay a note every month. Correct. But the company he's going through, that's $73 a week. That's easier to pull out of a check than to pull out $1,500. Now, you, you explained to me how I still got a child in Pampers and I got two very big, healthy kids to feed every month, every week, every day. And I'm supposed to pull $1,500 out, plus clothe them and put shoes on their feet. What did you do the year and a half that he was driving the dynasty? I was calling him, asking him to take his son to the doctor, take his son over, over here to the babysitter, or pick him up, or whatever. Tom can't do nothing for me. Why don't uh, my I My question ask? is, what did you do for transportation? Catch a cab. Okay. At $40 a week, if not over, depending on how many times I take my kids to the babysitter. Because it costs an extra dollar every stop. And how long did you do that? I've been doing it since me and him been split up, on and off. I think I got the picture. I have more than enough information, and I'm ready to render my decision, and I'll be back with it. When divorce court returns, the judge renders her verdict. And an update on the case of Helen Fields versus Wayne Fields. Divorce Court will be back in session in a moment. Divorce Court is back and the verdict is in in the case of Tyrone Pearson versus Marietta Pearson. Back in the matter of Tyrone Pearson and Marietta Pearson. While the court would love to see that Ms. Pearson has transportation for these children. I don't think that I have the authority to order him to turn the car over to you. I know that you're upset that she had a child out of the um, wedlock while you were married, but that's not why you're going to get this car because of that. I'm not buying into that argument. Mrs. Pearson, I think that you need to accept a little bit more responsibility and perhaps you have to get a weekend job or something to take care of a car. Now, I, feel, I sympathize with you and I know that you need transportation with three children, but you have a little control over having three children, particularly that last child, all right? And now that you're back and forth in relationships one after the other, you're probably setting yourself up for yet another child. I hope not.
because you see that it costs to take care of children. But unfortunately, because the car was purchased after the separation, so it's not community property, and more importantly, there's a co-buyer on the car who's responsible for the car as well. And we don't have that co-buyer before the court. So under the circumstances, I'm going to award the 1991 Chevy Lumina to Mr. Pearson. However, you should consider giving her some assistance in trying to get a car with some form of transportation. But in the meanwhile, at least you could assume all of the responsibility for his medical appointments and for transporting him in the event of emergency. I think that is the only fair thing to do. However, I can't order you to do that. That's my judgment. It is so ordered. Courts adjourn. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. When Divorce Court returns, an update on the case of Helen Fields versus Wayne Fields. 27 years of being with somebody, Your Honor, and they violate you the way I've been violated. It hurts. <laughs> Closed captioning for Divorce Court provided by. Are you getting divorced? Do you need Judge Maybelline Ephraim's help settling a dispute? If you want to be a guest on Divorce Court, call 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. And now for an update on a previous case in Divorce Court. After 27 years, Helen Fields came to court to end her marriage to Wayne because she said he was cheating. 27 years of being with somebody, Your Honor, and they violate you the way I've been violated. It hurts. <laughs> My God, I, I keep saying it. Why do you keep doing this to me? Okay. I used to love and adore this man. I love this man, Your Honor. Helen admits that her jealousy got the best of her, and when she saw Wayne's car parked near another woman's house, she smashed the windows. What type of car? Alexis. Alexis automobile? You broke out all of the windows? I was nice. I left the top window on the skylight. I left that. I could have taken that. You keep talking about the fact that long as he doesn't ride a whore in it, it's okay. Are you saying to me that you would still destroy it if you saw him with, quote, the whore in the vehicle? Right now, Your Honor, I don't know how to answer that question. The judge ordered that the Lexus be sold so that the fighting over the car would end. Helen has left her hometown for an extended vacation, and Wayne says that while he knows a divorce is the best thing, he hopes that he and Helen can find a way to be civil to each other. I was happy with the verdict, Bob. Like, like the judge may, did make one point, I should help her out with getting the kids and stuff to the, the babysitter and medical appointment. So I guess we're going to try to work something out with that behalf. Um, the verdict, it's okay, but, you know, I, I still don't see the point of how I'm supposed to get my child around while he's steady running around with the car, so. It was a rough matter, but I'd like to see us raise, help raise the kids up in a good, good environment home. And, uh, hope we can be friends. In today's session of Divorce Court, when Helen laid eyes on Wayne Fields for the first time, she knew she'd love him forever. But after a quarter century together, Helen is convinced that Wayne cheated. She's a whore! I will put that vehicle She's away a whore she will not. And now, she wants a divorce. 27 years of being with somebody, Your Honor, and they violate you the way I've been violated. It hurts. <laughs> My God, I, I keep saying it. Why do you keep doing this to me? But Wayne says Helen's temper is the problem. She has done everything to demean me, to trash my home. She would throw televisions down the steps, Your Honor. Did she ever hit you with any of those televisions? Oh, no, I'm too fast. I jump out of the way, but she does throw them. Do you love your wife? I love her, but I don't like her. I used to love and adore this man. I love this man, Your Honor. Now, Wayne and Helen Fields come face to face to end their marriage in today's session of Divorce Court. Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Wayne Fields versus Helen Fields. 
and I'm advised that after 25 years of marriage, four beautiful children that you have decided to call it an end? Why, Mrs. Fields? You managed 25 years. You can't go another minute? Your Honor, Your Honor, I beg your pardon, but you just don't know what this man has done to me. He goes out, he doesn't come home, you don't see him for three, four days at a time. You ask him where he's been, you ask him if he's been, if you're not laying in my bed, whose bed are you laying in? That's all I want to know. Where are you at and who are you with? And then he tells me it's none of my business. You don't really want to know that, do you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I really, really do. You want to know where he is and you just want him home with I you? I want him to tell me the truth. All I want is the God-given truth. Yes, I have a horse, but you know what? This is it. I've had it. I'm finished. I can't take it anymore. Mr. Fields? Actually, Your Honor, uh, for 27 years we've been... Joe, you want to give her a clinic? For 27 please? years we've known one another. For 25 years, yes, we have been married. Out of that 25 years, 20 of those years have been pretty unstable. Unstable in what way? Her anger, unbridled anger, Your Honor. She, ha she has done everything to demean me, to trash my home. She would throw TVs Amen. down the steps. Amen. She would tear telephones off Amen. the wall. She would amen. break the mirror. Well, you can hammers. stop amening because it's really not something to say amen about. Excuse me, Your Honor. No, you excuse me. Let him finish. I'm, I'm going to let him finish, but let me. I no, want no, she said let me finish. I'm going to let you finish. Well, no, she said let me finish. You, finish. Not, you don't have to need I'm your gonna permission. Let you finish. So I'm she would actually finish. take. She You're going to let him finish. Yes, ma'am. She throw would TVs. Throw televisions down the steps, Your Honor. Yes. It's not the first time. When I say she's done it, she has done it on at least four different occasions. Well, did she ever hit you with any of those televisions? Say that again, please. No, did she ever hit you with any of those televisions? Oh, no, I'm too fast. I jump out of the way, but she does throw them. She does throw them. She hit me with a hammer. Yeah. She hit you with a hammer? Yes. Because I was too close and she hit me on my foot with a not hammer. Not true. Yes, you did. Not true. You, you need to. Mrs. Phil, Honor. Who's a whore? But his Your Honor, she's this, a whore. Any female a, is a whore. Uh, she do not, is. Do not be friendly. Miss Phil, do not please say like stop. You, yeah, well, listen to me. She's she, a whore. When this gavel goes down, Honor, when Honor. this gavel goes down, it means your voice calms down. Your Both Honor, of you. you please, Mrs. Phil, talk. You, please stop please. this moment. You're going to be quiet for a moment until we get some control of this courtroom. Both of us, all three of us cannot talk at the same time. No, ma'am. I know it's emotional. I know you're yes, upset. I'm going to try to listen to both of you, but I can hear pretty good more than one thing going on at a time. Yes, but I really want to give you the attention that your case deserves. I need to follow some basic ground rules. You keep saying about a whore and another woman. Jesus, I assume that's who you're talking about. Yes, ma'am. So you think he's cheating? I know he's cheating. The woman got in my face when I broke out all the windows to the car. You broke out all the windows Every to the car? Every window, Your Honor. Every Everyone. window. Did you do that, Mrs. Fields? Why did I do that? When? when? Um, about a month ago, no, six weeks ago, Your Honor. What type of car? A Lexus. A Lexus automobile? You broke out all of the windows? Yes, Do you work? Yes, I did. I did. She knows a you Lexus have... automobile? It was your automobile? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, you she does not work. You broke all the windows to a car that cost Here's that much money? Here's my receipt for my Lexus right here Your in my Honor, hands. she does not work. Here's my she receipt for work. my Lexus. I didn't ask you for that. But Thank you, Your You Honor. broke out all of the windows to a Lexus vehicle. Well, I was Why? nice, Your Honor. I was nice. I left the top window in the skylight. I left that. I could have taken that. I was being nice. You think because that's... Because I went... Can I... If you're asking me, do can you I think that's it? funny when you say I was being nice and you left the top window in the skylight? It's my car. What possessed you to do that? It's, it's my not, car. It's is my it your car. car too? Your Honor, it's in both of our names. I paid the car notes on it. Here it is. She paid a down payment Here it is. only. I Here paid it the is. car notes throughout the year. Eighteen thousand dollars down paid, payment, Your Honor. Honor. Joe, please, would you take that piece of paper from her so she stopped waving it? <laughs> now I have it. Thank you, Your Honor. This is the receipt for. To prove that you purchased the, the Lexus, is yes, all right? Yes, ma'am. It says Helen Grant Fields on it. You see those checks right there? I paid the down payment. I paid the insurance. I paid the tags and the title. It was my car. If it hadn't been for me getting that, he wouldn't have had it. But what I do want to ask you, Your Honor, you asked me a question. What would possess me to break the windows yes. out of the van? The devil. What would the same the one van? that she reads in that Bible. 
<laughs> is it a Lexus van or a Lexus vehicle? I'm sorry, Your Honor, the Lexus. So, yeah, what would possess you to do that? The witch, and I'm being nice when I say witch. Thank you very much. And, uh, Your Honor, I just don't want to say the B word, okay? And, and you better not. I will not do that. <laughs> Are you cheating on her or no, not? No, I'm not, Your Honor. Do you love your wife? I love her, I don't like her. I don't like her ways. <laughs> I don't like she wasn't either. your first choice of, of uh, for a wife, was she? Say that again, please. Was, she wasn't your first choice for a wife, according to my records. Um, actually, actually not, because I had she had proposed to me. She and proposed before, to you. Yes, and before I accepted that proposal, I told her that there was someone that I knew here in the mainland that I was interested in, and I thought that I thought it was only fair that I would call that person and let them know that you know Wayne's ready to settle down possibly get married, and if that person wanted to be a part of my life. I told her to stay off base at that point. I didn't know her, but for Let, three let months. me follow this again. Mrs. Fields proposed to you. Yeah, yes, sure did. And you weren't really ready to marry her yet. You hadn't thought about that. That's correct. You were in love with somebody else. Uh, no, ma'am. No, I wasn't in love with them, but... Well, you would have preferred to marry someone well, else. I was ready. If I'm going to settle down, I thought it was only been decent affair to, you know, talk to this person who I was, you know, right into when I was in the military. And that's what I did. And so you asked her first whether... Yeah before you decided to answer Mrs. Fields? Yes. So you went into this wrong. Did yeah. you know you were the second choice? She knew. She was there when I made the call. Well, you know what? I might have been the second choice, but every day I looked in the mirror and I said, the best thing that ever happened to Wayne D. Fields is was Helen Mrs. Grant Fields. Field. When Divorce Court returns, Helen gives her emotional testimony. She's a whore! I will put that vehicle She's a whore where she will not have She's a whore to it. Be quiet. If you open your mouth again, I promise you, you're out that door. Are you getting divorced? Do you need Judge Maybelline Ephraim's help settling a dispute? If you want to be a guest on Divorce Court, call 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. Divorce Court is back in the case of Helen Fields, who after 25 years of marriage is divorcing her husband Wayne and accuses him of cheating on her throughout the marriage. Now that you've destroyed the vehicle, what do you want done with it? What I want done with it? Um, I certainly don't want whores in it, and, and he violates me by having whores in, in, in my vehicle. So you're divorcing. It's not the first time. It's All not right. the first okay, time, Your so, Honor. But now you're divorcing. Yes, ma'am. And, and this, ve this Lexus vehicle will yes, go to one of you. Yes, ma'am. Now, who wants it? I do, Your Honor. I do. Okay. Why do you want it, Mr. Fields? I want it, Your Honor, because, first of all, when it was purchased and uh, that document, I can attest to, she did not pay that much money. Yes, I don't know I where did. she got it from. Yes, I did. The vehicle was financed. And I paid the finance. No. I, that no, vehicle was fin Mrs. Fields, okay. please. Your Honor, no. that vehicle was financed at no. $300 a month, and no. I paid that for no. three where's, years. Where's your, where's, your fine, where's your paper? Okay, well, if you want to lie about it, that's fine okay. with me. Now, I let paid me that for three years. You say it was financed, and you paid $300 per that's month right. for three years. Yeah, she, put 12, she did put $12,000 uh, down initially 000. on a vehicle. 18000 There's the three checks right there, Your Honor. So you can't prove what, what was down, and you can't prove what was down. Because this does not tell me that you it put $18,000 down. It might not tell you, but it's satisfaction to me, Your Honor. Well, who's making this me? decision, me or you? You, Your Honor. I thought so. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may continue? No, actually... you may not continue. Okay. I'm talking. I'm oh, sorry. Did your mother ever tell you don't talk when other people are talking? Yes, ma'am. All right. This does not tell me that you put $18,000 down. This tells me on a Lexus, this document that you presented to me says that you withdrew some money from your account. Yes, ma'am. And those withdrawals totaled $18,000. Yes, but it doesn't tell me what you did with it. Yeah. I, so I, I wonder I why you brought that. me this document as opposed to the motor vehicle purchase contract that would tell me precisely what you put down, honest, what was financed, and what the monthly payments were. To be honest with you, Your Honor, when I tossed everything of his out of the house, I tossed everything that had his name on no, it. No, what do you mean house. his? You told me this was your car. That's my car right so there. So then it's not his. Excuse me? Then it's not his. You no, said it was your I'm car. I'm talking about anything that belonged to him was tossed out of the house. But the car you said belonged to you. Yes, ma'am. And the purchase contract then would belong to you. So well, why did you toss it out of the well, house? Well, I really don't even know where it was. You, you just said you tossed it out of the house. I Are said you a I liar? tossed everything out of the house. I don't know if that was part of everything. That's what I'm saying to you, You know, Donna. You know what I call that? Yes, ma'am. Double talking. Now, when the, the, all the windows, et cetera, were destroyed, have they been repaired? No, ma'am. No, Your Honor. I had to rent What's a garage. What's the cost of the repairs? About $3,000. Is there insurance? Not anymore. It, it terminated in June. 
And Your Honor, the police officer told me it wouldn't be insured because the vehicle that was driving that did the damage was registered to me. That's the van. Well, and she did it, and the insurance company would not pay for it. Thank you for it. telling me the police officer's interpretation of the law, but I don't need it. Okay, I'm sorry. He's a police officer. Yes. I think I do the legal interpretation the last time I checked. Am I still the, the person who does that? That's usually the way it works, Your Honor. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, if you get the car, you want to pay for the repairs? Yes, ma'am. But, but I'm saying, if I were to award this vehicle to you, yes. Mrs. Fields knows the license number, and she can spot this vehicle probably from miles away and know that that's my Lexus. Yeah. That, <laughs> and every time she sees it parked, based upon her past conduct of breaking things and throwing things, I would be afraid that she may just I am afraid, Your Honor. That's why I have a garage to keep park it in. Keep the whore out of the vehicle. That's, that's as simple no, as all that. No, you don't have to worry yeah, about nobody being in my vehicle. vehicle. You don't have to worry whore? about anybody being in my vehicle. She's a whore. I will put that vehicle she's away where she will not have Mrs. Fields access wrecker. to it. Mrs. Oh. Fields. Yes, ma'am. She's a home wrecker. Yes, ma'am. So you say. We've established that you think he's having a relationship. Think, I he know. denies it. The Your girl Honor, told me he was... Your Honor, a, the she girl has, told she me has that, had, Your Honor. She has goaded this woman, and I understand oh, that. Tried to run woman. her over with the vehicle. Listen to that. 20 minutes standing out there, and you know oh, it. People doing? jumped on, so on that van. Somebody call you a whore. Why standers? Excuse me. Say, Your Honor. Honor. Your Joe, Honor. take control, Why? please. No, don't just point at her. You gotta quit shouting. I'm kind of tired of yelling. sorry. I'm sorry. I have to take you out of here. All right. You're not going to hear it. I guarantee you. Okay. Thank you. Keep your mouth shut unless the judge stops you. I want an opportunity to be heard. You're not listening to me. That's all. Listen to me. The judge will ask you, and she'll give you a chance. Be quiet, Mr. Fields. Yes, ma'am. Now, okay. I'm about to lose my patience with you. One more outburst from you, and you will hear your ruling outside the courtroom. All right. I promise you. And I don't make idle threats. Will you give me a chance to be uh -uh. heard? I've heard all I need to hear from you except the questions I ask. All right. You answer those questions and that alone. You keep talking about the fact that as long as he doesn't ride a whore in it, it's okay. If I award the vehicle to him and the two of you are divorced, it's his vehicle to do whatever and to ride whomever he would want to ride in it. Are you saying to me that you would still destroy it if you saw him with, quote, the whore in the vehicle? Um... Right now, Your Honor, I don't know how to answer that question because, you know, 27 years of being with somebody, Your Honor, and they violate you the way I've been violated. It hurts. <laughs> Your Honor, no, I, I don't know if you've ever been it to hurts. like that. It hurts. I agree. It hurts. <laughs> My God, I, I keep saying it. Why do you keep doing this to me? Okay, but Your it's Honor, over. Please. I mean, you don't know I have to go every six months to take an age test because I don't know where the heck he's been, who he's been with, what he's been doing. And when somebody gets up in your face, Your Honor, when they sit there and tell you, yeah, I screwed your man, how do you think I feel? I used to love and adore this man. I love this man, Your Honor. I did. And I understand that, Mrs. Fields. <laughs> and you know how it feels? I'm sure that it hurts. Do you have a Kleenex? I'm sure that it hurts. No, you and don't. that's why you're ending it. But destroying someone's property or destroying your own property cannot make this man love you, cannot make him be fair and honest with you, cannot make him be, you know, the man you want him to be. Your cannot Honor, make him... Your Honor, please, can no, I just say something? No, please. no, no. You well, said enough, well, and I, I understand to... your position. But so all, why do you want this car? I feel that that car is worth 27 years of marriage and 27 years of my faithfulness to my husband. I, that's what it represents to me, And that's Your why Honor. you want it. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor. No, Ms. Your Honor has heard enough. Can I just say I've heard this enough. To you? Stop, Mrs. Fields. I've heard enough. Can I produce no, this to you? No, no, I've heard enough. I'm about to take a break and render a decision. Yes, ma'am. Court will be at recess. The judge gets tough while rendering her verdict. Just be quiet. If you open your mouth again, I promise you, you're out that door. And an update on the case of Carolyn Baldwin versus Demarcus Baldwin. She should be proud about that. Proud to bring a child into the world that the father's not going to be anywhere around doing anything for him? No, she should be proud that it was me and not nobody oh, else. Please. Divorce Court will be back in session in a moment. Divorce Court is back in session as the judge renders her verdict.
in the case of Wayne Fields versus Helen Fields, who are ending their 25-year marriage. Mrs. Fields, part of your, we're back in the matter of Wayne Fields and Helen Fields. I understand that you may be hurt, but part of this is drama, and you need to cut out some of the drama. No, this is me. You this is me, Your Honor. You know what? Just be quiet. If you open your mouth again, I promise you, you're out that door. And I'm going to give you some advice, Mrs. Fields. You need to learn to calm yourself and to exercise more restraint in anger. You're teaching your children, this is the way you respond to anger. You destroy things, you tear up things, you break things. That is not the way you respond to hurt and pain. And the fact that he cheated and the fact that he disrespects you or whatever is not a justification for violence. There is none. I believe the police slogan is, there is no excuse for domestic violence. And that's it. Now, the judgment of this court regarding this car has been a bone of contention, and I'm going to now take away the bone from both of you. The judgment of this court is that the Lexus automobile is to be sold from the net proceeds of the sale. I will award Miss you half, except each of you half, except you're paying the $3,000 for the damage. So from your half, we're going to subtract another $3,000, Mrs. Fields, because he should not have to pay a penny for the damages that you caused. The property is community, but the damage was yours. That's the best thing I, can, I see to do with this case. I'm satisfied with the judgment. Well, I'm glad to know I that am. you're satisfied, well, although I don't need your satisfaction. <laughs> That's the order of the court. Court's adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Well, he wasn't rewarded, was he? When Divorce Court returns, an update on the case of Carolyn Baldwin versus Demarcus Baldwin. Children are a gift. She should be proud about that. Proud to bring a child into the world that the father's not going to be anywhere around doing anything for him? Closed captioning for Divorce Court provided by... If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. And now for an update on a previous case in divorce court. When DeMarcus found out that his wife Carolyn was pregnant with his child, he walked out on her. Did you want any more children? No. If no. he didn't want it, he knew what he should have done. Or you yeah. could have used a condom. Why should I have to wear a condom when we married? Children are a gift. She should be proud about that. Proud to bring a child into the world that the father's not going to be anywhere around doing anything for him? No, she should be proud that it was me and not nobody oh. else. Please. <laughs> Carolyn was struggling to build a life for herself and her child as a single mother, and she came to court to get back the furniture she and DeMarcus had shared. Why should I leave it there? And then she go on with her life, and then it's mine, and her new whatever comes in, and he got to sit on it. And they shouldn't work like that. I should be able to take it with me. The judge decided that Carolyn would benefit most from the furniture and awarded it to her. I am not going to take the bed from her, and I can't believe that you're asking me to do that. The least she can have is a bed and give her the dignity of having a nice place to sleep. A week after appearing in court, Carolyn gave birth to a premature but healthy baby. Carolyn says DeMarcus hasn't seen her or his child at all, and she thinks they're both better off that way. I love this man dearly, and I still love him, but it's time to move on. That's all I can say. We've been off and on going through things like this forever, and I think it reached this pinnacle with the family being out of the way and everything, and there's nothing left but her and I. As you can see, there is no her and I, so the marriage would have to end.